All right, everyone. Welcome to the Tonto's Demise week. What week is it? Week five recap. Couldn't think of what song to use this week. Thought about it all day and went with I Will Survive because I know we've got a lot of people. Half league, maybe. Maybe not quite that many. A lot of people down in the dumps <laughs> about their team's performances so far this year. Um, especially Jimmy and Justin, probably. <laughs> um, so, a few things I want to address right off the bat. Um, Jimmy, you're 0-5. I think last year you started off, what, like 3 or 4 0? Or, or started off, definitely you were in the playoff hunt. You were, you were one of the top teams last year after the first couple of weeks. And then you went on a horrendous losing streak. And it's carried, it's carried over to this year. You're currently 0 and 5. And I can only imagine how painful it is. And, I mean, I kind of feel like I do know kind of how it feels, but it's been a brutal ride for you in the last two years, so I'm making a declaration right now for everyone, the two people who are going to watch this. I, Springfield Isotopes, in respect to Jimmy the Wolf and his bad luck, I will never again complain about how about my record and my team and how miserable it is to lose and lose and have a bad record. Uh, <laughs> I I mean I mean it might happen. I'll do it a little if I'm in that situation, but I will not go overboard with it. I. No more. In respect, as a sign of respect to you, Jimmy, <laughs> and the suffering that others are going through, you don't want to hear it from me. Uh, <laughs> so, I promise I will at least I will at least try not to do it ever again. I might do it a little bit, but hopefully, I will remember that I'm saying <laughs> this and. I will do my best in the future to keep the any complaining about my record, no matter how poor it is, um, to the extreme minimum. That being said, we also have a couple of teams that are 1 and 4 this week. Um, so, hence the inspiration for the opening song here, because we've got Tree Sites, we've got Detling, We've got Justin, and we've got the Wolf at 0-5. Uh, let's see. Unfortunately, three of you are knocked out of the knockout pool. Uh, Jimmy, you are actually still, you are still alive in the knockout pool, even though you are sitting at 0-5. And, and as for you, Tree, Detling, Justin, you guys are 1-4. All I have to say is, you know who was one and four at this time last year? This guy, one and four last year, and look where we are now. Let's see, <laughs> we got the Tonto's Demise trophy in the corner there. So, don't give up yet. You can survive, you will survive. There are better days ahead. You're not done yet. You might be. <laughs> Things are getting difficult, but there's always that spark of hope. And I hope that you guys, <laughs> I hope that you all still have it, uh, at least for the time being. So, that being said, let's get into the matchups. First matchup, of course, is always the defending champion, Springfield Isotopes, going against the uh, the juggernaut that was the Mighty Midgets coming into this week. 
I believe, three straight 200-plus point performances. Um, this one came down to Monday night. Mighty Midgets actually had a chance to come back, but the Springfield Isotopes were able to hold on and remain undefeated. Final score here, 185.65 to 156.3. All right, for the Isotopes, we had Mahomes with 42, A.J. Green, just over 17, Tyreek Hill, about 12.5, Mike Williams, uh, about 7.5, James White, almost 24, T.J. Yeldon, just over 26, Austin Hooper, about 16.5, Todd Gurley, 33.3. Uh, Mason Crosby, finishing with actually, my, not, not minus one, but minus 0. 0.9, technically. He would have been, <laughs> he was at minus five until the very end of the game when he did make a 41 yard field goal <laughs> and knocked himself from uh, the. <laughs> record books of most fantasy football leagues, probably, for kicker futility. Um, <laughs> the minus five, un probably an unprecedented total, but fortunately, he jumped, he bumped that up to only minus one. And then Denver Broncos defense didn't do too good. Yahoo says seven. I believe that was actually the correct total. Then for Mighty Midgets, he was, let's see, I believe he was about 60 points behind going into Sunday night where he had Zeke. And then Monday night he had Kamara and a receiver, Paul Richardson. So between those three players, he needed 60 points. Uh, you've got Zeke and Kamara who could put up those points all by themselves, um, plus a receiver there. So it was definitely um, up in the air. <laughs> at least going into Monday night about the matchup. Um, although if Zeke had performed a little bit better on Sunday night, things might have been a little bit more <laughs> frightening for the isotopes there. But let's just run it right down. Uh, Roethlisberger, 40, just over 42. Thielen, about 24 and a half. Said he had Paul Richardson, who went for nine. Not a bad total. So you needed about 20 from each player. 20 from Richardson, 20 from Zeke, 20 from Kamara, or some uh, way of totaling up to 60 there. Uh, but unfortunately, you couldn't quite do it. Uh, let's see, Marvin Jones Jr. only had, only caught one pass this week, uh, but it was a touchdown, an eight-yard touchdown. So he got you 7.8. And like I said, Zeke and Kamara, uh, Sunday night, Zeke only got you 15.4. Actually, not too bad. Close to the 20 that you needed from each guy. But unfortunately, uh, Kamara, I believe he was hampered by a knee injury over the course of the last week. Um, plus, Mark Ingram came back, and they are on their bye next week. So it seemed like they must have kind of wanted Ingram to get in there and get back into the flow and maybe let Kamara let his knee heal for the next week or two while he can. And he put up only seven points, just under seven this week, which is about 30 points less than what he's been averaging. <laughs> 20 to About 25 to 30 points less than normal. So the isotopes <laughs> take, a brief, take a deep breath of relief there. Um, but for the, uh, fortunately for Mighty Midgets, I would imagine that better times and better numbers are ahead, and this week was just an anomaly. Uh, then we got tight end Jared Cook, only six points. Alex Collins in the flex, only seven and a half. Prater, your kicker, about seven points there. And the Chargers defense, Yahoo says 15, but I'm pretty sure the actual total was 30, because between... I know between your kicker and your defense, I had to add about 16 points to your score there. Uh, I just know off, know off the top of my head because I was keeping track of this matchup more, than, more so than the rest of them for obvious reasons there. But for Mighty Midgets, like I said, you had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 
single digit scores there and only three for the isotopes and that's not going to be enough to get it done most weeks even though you were pretty competitive in a couple of spots there uh, it just wasn't enough this week Mighty Midgets they dropped to three and two they are in fourth place so not too much to worry about there for yet at least not yet and Isotopes remain undefeated they are five and oh and they are still in first place All right, let's see. Next matchup will be Hillbillies on PCP versus the White Wolf. And this one was a complete blowout. I believe on Thursday night, Brian already had over 100 points. Um, almost, one, let's see, about nine... <laughs> 97 points approximately just from Tom Brady and Eric Ebron. Strange as that may sound. Plus you had Josh Gordon who caught a touchdown there. Uh, he had 13 points. So that was what, 97? About 110 points already on after Thursday night's game. That's going to be, a, I mean, that's a great start. Probably going to be enough to finish off most opponents there. And that's what happened this week as the Hillbillies had the highest score of the week. Uh, let's see. Tom Brady, about 66. Kenny Galladay, just under 20. Michael Crabtree, about 12 and a half. Antonio Brown, 28, just over 28. David Johnson, just over 21. McCaffrey, just over 20. Uh, Ebron, 31 and a half. Gordon and your flex. Um, even 13. Butker was your kicker. Looks like about 12 and a half. And then you went with the Eagles defense. Yahoo says 10. Um, I think it might have been 13 maybe. Maybe just a little bit more than um, what it says there, even though they lost the game. I think the yardage, they did, I think they did good on rushing yardage. I can't remember for sure. But uh, anyway, way more than enough to get past the White Wolf this week who continues to shuffle his lineup. Um, although I gotta say, you pretty much have your ideal lineup in there this week. Um, did anyone suspect that Case Keenum was gonna have 35 completions this week and almost 400 yards passing against the Jets? Um, no, that's an anomaly. I am personally still on the side of you're going with Matthew Stafford every week, um, ride or die, <laughs> basically. Unfortunately, um, it was the wrong uh, choice this week. However, it was about a 30-point difference between Stafford and Case Keenum. Uh, looking at the other guys in your lineup, you did make the right choice with defense there. So um, even though you didn't play... You played the wrong. You played the right quarterback, but he did not perform as he should. Um, there is always. <laughs> I feel like I say this quite often, but there is always some comfort. At least there, you can find some comfort in knowing that there was nothing you could have done, even if you had started point-wise your ideal, your most ideal lineup. You still would not have gotten a win this week against Hillbillies, who I said. Uh, Jimmy's just had the, the worst luck this year, <laughs> whether it's with the starting lineup or just going against teams who go off every week. Um, here, Brian, I think he was knocked out last week. His team could barely make it past 100 last week, and now he is <laughs> well over 200, almost probably doubled his score from whatever it was last week. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Oh, looks like... Hillbillies had 127 last week, so, right, 127? Yes. So they were 100 and, what, uh, 8 points, <laughs> almost, not quite doubling their score from last week, but as close as you're going to get. So, let's take a look at the White Wolf here. Stafford, 31, Juju Smith, 13 and a half. 
No more Odell Beckham Juju. <laughs> he is gone. We got Michael Thomas now, 11 and a half. Cooper Cup actually got you 21 points before he was out with a concussion there. Uh, Marshawn Lynch, only six points. Freeman from Denver, uh, about seven and a half. Tight end was Njoku, just under 13. Uh, your new, uh, your other new addition, Amari Cooper in the flex. He only got you two points. That hurts. Boswell, looks like he got four. And then it said Bengals defense. Yahoo says 30. I believe it was closer to 40. Something like that. They did pretty well this week. But again, like I said, it was not enough. Even if you had made most all the correct decisions in your lineup, which is easy to look at now and say what you should have done and not done, but um, not enough going going against uh, the Hillbillies having what was what is probably going to be their best week of the season. <laughs> um, so at two hundred and thirty five points there. While Hillbillies on PCP, he with this win moves up to three and two. He is in sixth place. While the White Wolf, unfortunately for you, you remain winless. You are zero and five. And you are still in the basement in 12th place. All right. Next up, Shawshank Athletics versus the other juggernaut, kind of, going into this, uh, is through the first couple weeks of this season. The Bad Luck Bears. And Bad Luck Bears living up to their name this week as they fall to the Shawshank Athletics. Final score 200.3. To 168.75. Shawshank, I think this is his best score of the uh, year so far. Um, after <laughs> posting some pretty disappointing scores there. Uh, he actually, let's see, take a look at his lineup. Aaron Rodgers got you 70 points this week. Definitely his best game of the season. He had 32 completions. I think they, they fell behind um, pretty quickly in that game against Detroit. Hence the 400 passing yards and 32 completions, even though they still lost the game. Uh, kind of glad that I didn't go with Aaron Jones in this game against uh, the Lions' pretty poor rushing defense over TJ Yeldon. Uh, thought about that play, glad I didn't make it. Thought the Packers would, um, thought the score would be the other way around with the Packers getting a, jumping out to a big lead and the Lions playing uh, catch-up, but it was the other way around here, which might have been a big factor for uh, Shawshank, Shawshank <clears throat> excuse me, Athletics. Sorry, Aaron Rodgers, he had 70. Robert Woods, 19.5. Funches, about 9.5. Uh, Christian Kirk, you plugged him in this week, I think because of bye weeks and injury problems. Uh, T.Y. Hilton injury problem there. A couple other receivers on by. So you plugged him in. And he had actually got you a long touchdown. You got plus three there. So Yahoo says 18. You actually got 21 from him. All right. Buck Allen got you just under 12. Carry on Johnson, 10 and a half. Uh, tight end. You have a lot of injuries problems there. So you picked up and played uh, Uzuma from the Bengals. He got you about six and a half points. In the flex, you had Crowell. He actually also had a long touchdown. He was over 200 rushing yards, so that's a plus five bonus. He actually got you eight bonus points there, five of which should already have been tacked on to Yahoo, and only the long touchdown bonus isn't uh, on there. So he actually got you 38 points. Kicker was Bryant. Looks like he got you about six, six and a half. And Jacksonville defense, um, Yahoo says 10. I think it was actually right around there. They gave up a lot of points, a lot of yards to the Chiefs, and they lost the game, even though they did have a couple turnovers there. Looks like they had a sack as well. So it said Yahoo says 10. It was right around there, maybe 13, maybe 16, but pretty close to what Yahoo says. But those couple big scores there said 70. 38, 70 from Rogers, 38 from Crowell. Um, that's already over 100 points there. Enough with your other players to get you to the 200-point plateau. 
and enough to get past Bad Luck Bears this week, who missed out on another 200-point performance. He had Matt Ryan go for 40, just over 43. Brandon Cooks actually went out with an... He and Cooper Cup both went out with concussions this week. Unfortunately for you, said Cup scored 21 points before going out. Cook scored zero before going out. So that hurts there in a matchup that was, what, a 32-point eh, difference. So I don't think uh, some of these guys said... Brandon Cooks, could he go for 32 points? Yeah. Um, but that's, a, asking, that's asking a lot. But, well, then you had Will Fuller, who only went for three and a half. So if you consider those two guys putting up about 15 points each, which isn't asking too much, this matchup possibly could have gone the other way. But such is football. Uh, then Jordy Nelson, just over 14 <clears throat> Excuse me, James Conner, 37 and a half, a couple touchdowns over 100 yards, um, looks like over 200, well, no, 185 scrimmage yards from him, pretty good performance there, bounce back after a couple quiet weeks for him. Uh, Devontae Freeman back in the lineup after an injury, just over six. Jimmy Graham, 13 and a half. Sterling Shepard, still running steady in your flex there. Another 11.5 points for him. Hopkins, your kicker, Redskins kicker. Uh, looks like he got about 10 points for you. And Houston defense, Yahoo says 14. I want to say it was closer to 20, 23 maybe, something like that. But not enough to get past Shawshank and his two really big performances, um, said from Rodgers and Coel, even though uh, James Conner pretty much kept pace with Crowell there. The 30-point difference between your quarterbacks wasn't, and the um, said Cooks and Fuller combining for only three and a half. The big difference makers in this matchup. Uh, let's see, both of you are now three and two. Um, Shawshank moving up to three and two, and in seventh place, while the Bad Luck Bears moved down to three and two, they are still in. Fifth place. Next up, we have FC Bahort going up against Disco. And Disco manages to take this one down. Uh, let's see, final score 173.85 to FC Bahort 132.3. All right, Disco, Derek Carr, 39 points. New, newly acquired Odell Beckham Jr. I think he did not have any touchdowns this season yet until he became a member of Disco. So he decided to not just catch a touchdown, he decided to throw one too. And he got you 33 points. Stefan Diggs, 21 and a half. Corey Davis, just under nine. And your other new acquisition, Melvin Gordon III. Um, he was the rock on the wolf, on the, on the white wolf. <laughs> this year, um, trading him away, like I think Kevin Bean said in the lineup, you just can't get uh, <laughs> these pass-catching stud running backs, three down backs for their teams, workhorse running backs, they are a dime a dozen, while you can get um, wide receivers who can contribute enough to give you, uh, so you can pluck them off the waiver wire, you can trade for them, you can find them. There are a lot of ways to find those wide receivers, but running backs who are gonna give you 20 some points a week, uh, you got, <laughs> they're hard, hard to give up. I mean, you got two good players, Amari Cooper, just, ah, man, so much potential there, he, but he's just so hit or miss. Um, uh, I mean, Michael Thomas is. It, I, I don't have anything wrong with. It. I don't really see any any problem with that trade. I don't. I personally would not have made it, but because um, I think it heavily favors. I personally think it heavily favors Disco just because. Um, said Melvin Gordon, been one of the top running backs in the league point wise this year. I know what uh, Michael Thomas has done, what he can do. 
him between him and Beckham Jr. pretty even there, um, an even swap. But um, said Amari Cooper, he's going to get you two, or he's going to get you twenty-five. <laughs> you, you need more that uh, you need more um, consistency um, from in your lineup than he's going to give you. And they had that with Gordon, but hey, I'm not gonna. I'm not here to say anything one way or the other. I said my personal opinion. Disco definitely made out here, but I'm not saying that the trade is bullshit or one head was favored one way or another, or we should veto this or that. You guys are happy. You made your trade. You're not. I mean, that's. It is. I can sit here and critique it. A lot of people already have critiqued it, and. Yeah, I, I mean, trades don't happen unless either unless both managers are happy with it in this league. So no one throws away their team and their season, and their players for trade and trades and things like that. So you'll never see me um, <laughs> calling for a veto or complaining. I just I've given up on it because it's just um, everyone thinks every trade. <laughs> is a bunch of crap, is a bunch of one-sided garbage, <laughs> it seems like. So, but here I am talking about it for a minute or two here. So anyway, back to the real, uh, what's really important. Gordon had 22, Bryda had just over 13. Tight end was Jordan Reed, he got you just over three. Ridley in the flex, no touchdowns this week for him, only seven and a half points. Gostowski about 10, and the Tennessee Titans defense, it seems like every time Disco plugs in a defense who should have a field day against their opponent, uh, they end up losing the game. Um, uh, well, unlike well, they didn't get crushed like the Baltimore Ravens did against the Bengals that one week, but they did uh, lose the game, didn't do too well. Yahoo says 10, but I actually think you might have gotten about 16 or 19, somewhere in that uh, range, even though they lost the game. Point totals were pretty low. Yardage was kind of low. Uh, so they didn't do too bad, even in, de in defeat. But more than enough to get past FC Bohorek this week. He had Andy Dalton at 34.5. Keenan Allen, 17.5. Keelan Cole, 11. Ryan Grant, just under 12. Kareem Hunt, 16.5. Jay Ajayi, only 2.5 there. Gronk, 13.5. Adrian Peterson, uh, six point two. Kicker was Bailey. Looks like he had, was a little bit, a little bit over ten. And then the Rams defense. Yahoo says two. They did win the game. Gave up a lot of points and a lot of yards. Um, yeah. Let's see. I think the actual score though was probably closer to ten, something like that. But not enough said to get past Disco this week. He continues rolling on. He is four and one. In second place, while FC Bohorek drops to one and four, he is in eleventh place. And unfortunately, Juddy, you are the victim of the knockout pool this week. You are eliminated, so not to worry about that. <laughs> worry about that anymore. Uh, all right, next matchup: Possum Magic versus the Dub C Hooligans. Both guys. Uh, <laughs> Perhaps down on their on their lineups going into this week, both needing a, needing a win here. Uh, Possum Magic had a bounce back. Had, Possum Magic and Space uh, Space Antelope bounced back with some big weeks last week. Still, both of, I think actually both of you guys put up pretty good scores this week, but for not either of you, it was not enough to get a win here as the Dubsy Hooligans explodes for two hundred and twenty. 0.25 points, even though Possum Magic put up a respectable 169.95. So, for Dub C Hooligans, he went with Andrew Luck, got you about 65 points. Receivers Demarius Thomas, Nelson Aguilar, and Tyler Lockett, 21.5, 8.5, and 19.5, respectively. Running backs Mixon and Thompson, 20.5, and just over 12. <clears throat> Excuse me, respectively. Tight end, Zach Ertz, another big game for him. 27 points. 
In the flex, John Brown, just under 10. Kicker was Tucker, about 8.5, maybe 9 points from him. And then the Minnesota Vikings defense, playing them against your beloved Eagles. They won the game. Uh, Yahoo says 18. It was probably in the low to mid-20s was the actual total there, though, for you. So a lot of big scores there. So it's 65, a couple 20s, um, several 20s there. So enough to get you over 220, like I said, and get past Possum Magic, who was really needing this win, unable to get it, even though uh, said 170, pretty good score. But we are in a whole new world, as we know. <laughs> and not enough to get a win this week. Let's see, Deshaun Watson, just under 60. Golden Tate, Emmanuel Sanders, Jarvis Landry, 9.2, 16.2, and just under 12, respectively there. Carlos Hyde and, uh, what's this guy's first name? Naheem Hines? What else say Hines? He got, let's see, Hyde, 9.5. 16 from Hines, no more Antonio Brown on Possum Magic there. We won't get into that. <laughs> um, although, I should mention that um, Hillbillies on PCP does now possess the two of the top three picks in our draft this year. Hmm. Both of, Two of the top three picks are on the same team there. Uh, uh, I think Brian pulled off some kind of crap like that last year, some kind of magician, pulling a rabbit out of his ass, not your hat, your ass, and getting these players, uh, <laughs> these first round players, for uh, pieces <laughs> there. But it is what it is. I admit, it sounds like I'm complaining, but I do have opinions on it, but um, you're, you're free. Again, you're all free to do pretty much whatever you'd like. It makes you happy with your team. Uh, tight end, you had Hunter Hurst coming back from injury. Rookie, tight end for Baltimore. Um, I think you had Trey Burton on bye, so you didn't have much choice here. Funny that it worked out that way, that this guy came back just in time for your, your other tight end's bye week. Unfortunately for you, he only caught one pass for seven yards, so 1.7. And your big play, Tyler Boyd, actually kind of been a disappointment ever that um, since you picked him up. Well, actually, maybe this week. He did pretty good last week, 21 points. He's going to be, I mean, he started off pretty strong. Will he be able to keep it up all year long? Maybe yes, maybe no. We will have to wait and see how that goes. But this week, he let you, he let you down with only 8.5 points. Kicker, also Bengal Bullock, he got you about 10. And then the Carolina, Panther, uh, Carolina Panthers defense, Yahoo says 16. I believe they were actually closer to 25 to 30, something like that. They did actually put up a pretty good score. Um, so between, uh, you, let's see, Watson, 60, and your defense did pretty good. But said once again, a lot of single-digit scores there. One, two, three, four, five. That's half of your lineup getting single digits. That's also that's always almost always going to be a recipe for disaster there. Possum magic. And unfortunately, you dropped to one and four this week. You are in ninth place, while the Dubsy Hooligans move up to two and three, and he is in. 8th place, right above Possum Magic there. Alright, last matchup I believe. Gags to Riches versus Space Antelope. This one actually came down to Monday night, although maybe it shouldn't have. I believe... Let's see. Gags was winning by about 27, 28 points. He still had Jamison Crowder left, while Space Antelope had... Uh, let's see, Mark Ingram and the Saints kicker. Uh, this one actually ended up uh, becoming pretty close. If you didn't have Crowder there going on <laughs> uh, Monday night for you gags, let's see. Uh, you actually would have lost by a point or so if you had had all your players done and had the score that you had before.
But fortunately for you, that's not the way it went. You got the win 192.65 to 184.65. So an eight point difference there. Uh, Ingram and Lutz, Lutz did pretty much everything they could to make this one close, but it was not quite enough. Gags to Ridges, Kirk Cousins, just over 50. Devontae Adams, 29. Alshon Jeffrey, 6. Crowder, 9.5. Uh, let's see, Barkley and Murray, 28.9 and 7.6. Travis Kelsey, an even 15. You went with Tyrell Williams from the Chargers in your flex, 9.5 points there. And another, another negative one uh, kicker score this week was... You, with Robbie Gold there, missing his only field goal attempt and getting you minus one. And then, perhaps, the, was it the bold play of the week? You went with Kansas City defense at home against Jacksonville. Although, I believe your other alternative was the Rams, the Seahawks defense against the Rams. So, you kind of had to go with the Chiefs defense this week. And they showed up for you big time. Yahoo says 32 um, I think that the Jacksonville still pretty, did pretty good in terms of yardage totals there. So the actual score might have been about 36 or 38, something like that. Enough to get past Space Antelope. Let's take a look at his lineup. He had Rivers go for just under 50. Julio, 11.2. Hopkins, just over 25. Five and a half for Fitzgerald. Lindsay, just over 11. Sony Michelle, and even 18. Just like your girlfriend. <laughs> George Kittle, the tight end, 13.3. Uh, said Mark Ingram coming back. Gets two touchdowns, 21 and a half from him. Looks like Lutz got about seven and a half. And then Patriots defense had a pretty good game. Yahoo says 13. Uh, actual total was probably closer to 20. But, so this matchup came down, Inc, the, your Saints made it close for Space Antelope, but it was not quite enough, says Crowder got about 10 there to keep, um, keep you away. Uh, so with this win, Gags to Riches, kind of quietly, uh, under the radar, I guess, I think this, this year so far, he's 4-1. and one. No one's really talking about Gags' team, or um, on the, at least on the lineup. Seems like, you know, people are talking about... Um, Maybe it's just because he hasn't made any no big trades yet or anything, which is his usually um, how he makes some noise in the, <laughs> amongst the league members here. But he's been pretty quiet this year and plugging right away. He is said kind of quietly four and one in third place. And Space Antelope, after getting up, maybe hoping for that bounce back last week, he drops a heartbreaker. I want to say, I, dare I say. Um, and he drops down to 1-4 and four and is in 10th place. All right, so that is pretty much it for week five. I think I've pretty much said what I wanted to say. Um, said a little bit of talk about those trades. Um, personally, I think that <laughs> I would, if I was the person who had Antonio Brown, I would not have traded him for what you got for him. And if I was the person who had said Gordon and Beckham Jr. I would not have traded those guys away either. But you did what you did, and so be it. Um, we'll see how it turns out. Uh, we had three more 200-point scores this week. I am not sure off the top of my head how many that is now for the year. Should I just go through it real quick and figure it out? Uh, yeah, sure, why not? So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So, yeah, in five weeks, we have had sixteen two hundred point totals, about three a week. Uh, <laughs> so what's 12 times five? That's 60. So, uh, six with that 16 out of 60 plus 16 out of 60 possible scores have been, uh, 
over 200. Let's grab the calculator real quick, see if we can figure out what percentage that is. 26.6. So you always round up. We are at 27%. <laughs> I guess three, well, it makes sense if just over three a week out of 12, it would be just over 25%. Duh. <laughs> um, so yeah, we are averaging, uh, we are at a 27% scoring rate, 200 point rate this year. <laughs> Things are not slowing down. Quarterbacks, I mean, uh, I th I, it seems really, and even I think a lot of the pundits on TV, bet, uh, people make them, uh, casinos making the betting lines and things like that are starting to notice um, the shift in scoring. I think the average games total has gone, I think they said it on Monday Night Football last night, like the average has gone from like 42 points combined in a game to about 46 or 47, maybe 48. Like it's jumped up several points, which is uh, pretty significant to um, gamblers and betting lines there, overs and unders. Um, wait, but we, I think we've already seen it here with these crazy quarterback scores. Um, you've seen the penalties from defenders hitting quarterbacks. Um, they've, they've been, they've kind of, the NFL is, for better or worse, transitioning into a league that wants to see scoring and points before defense, and it's getting harder and harder for uh, defenses to um, hit people and, and be consistently strong. Unless you're getting turnovers, um, so they're making it all the rules kind of favor quarterbacks and receivers anymore. Uh, you, all, everything is starting to favor offense. So you kind of feel bad for some of those uh, defensive players who are almost afraid to hit people anymore like they used to because you don't want to get crucial penalties at crucial points in games that are going to cost you and your team here. So I really starting to think that these high scores are especially, I think we thought this year that it would come from the running backs uh, mostly. Yeah, that we're... We're definitely getting a lot more points from the running backs. Now that all the receiving stats count, a lot of times last year, your running backs would only, they might only get you three, four, five points sometimes, unless they're scoring touchdowns. Um, but this year, you're getting probably at least 10 points, if not more, every week from your running backs. But it has really been the biggest area has been the receiving Um the passing and the quarterbacks, just uh, so many 60, 70, 80 point scores that we've had. And I thought it was going to slow down, but I really am just thinking that it's not going to. We'll see what happens with that. Um, yeah, it's like I said, Justin was eliminated, FC Bohoric, eliminated from the knockout pool this week. Um, so that means we have Gags, Treesice, Detling. Brian and Justin are eliminated so far, and <laughs> just wanna, one last thing, I um, was thinking about this earlier, that, because um, personally, I was expecting the, the Springfield Isotopes to get a beat down this week from Mighty Midgets, and it did not happen, and we are, have managed to go 5-0, and oh. so it being about 10 days into October, as of right now, uh, go back and think about it. Last year, the Springfield Isotopes were three and seven, which means they needed to win out their schedule, and they did. And then they won through the playoffs. Uh, so putting six games in a row there to finish the season last year, and have started off five and zero oh this year. So guys, what are you doing? <laughs> You're. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Each and, every, each and every one of you that isn't me in the, in the league only has one true goal, and that is to knock off the isotopes. And no, not, none of you have done it in 11 months, almost a year. I'm pretty sure that it's going to happen anytime now. I'm um, enjoying this 
um, early season role that we're on. Uh, do I foresee it continuing? No. <laughs> Am I optimistic or more pessimistic about it? Definitely pessimistic. Uh, there's tough teams that still got to play. Um, every team is capable of blowing up each week. Kind of gotten some lucky matchups here. Haven't gotten against these two, a lot of these 200 point to, uh, point scorers uh, these past couple weeks here. So it's all kind of just come down to lucky, getting lucky with your matchups. Some people have been unlucky with their matchups, as we know, but that's just I said, it's just part of the game. Part of the game. We don't control it. It's just the way it goes. Um, but yeah, guys. It's been almost a year since you, any of you, have beaten the isotopes. What are you doing? <laughs> we'll see how much longer it continues. I don't think it's going to go on for much longer. Um, so hopefully, me talking about this will not um, upset the fantasy gods. Although I'm sure Brian will probably mention that I have done it. I've called down the thunder from the fantasy gods, but um. Hey, I'm not, like I said, I'm uh, happy that it's happening, but I am very pessimistic that it is not going to continue. <laughs> so, uh, it's a, it's a, we're a long way from being done, guys. So, uh, and I think I got definitely tough matchups down the road. Um, personally, I, I, the way I've always played it, to be 100% honest, I do not care about the regular season championship, don't really care if I get a bye week or not, I just want to get that, those seven, as long as I get those seven wins and I get into the playoffs, that is all I care about, to be 100% honest, and fortunately, I'm well on my way so far, uh, we'll see what happens these next few weeks, any, said, as we all know, any given Sunday, anything can happen. I'm not knocking any of your teams because, like I said, and I wholeheartedly believe this, all of you are more than capable of dropping 200 points every, any on any given week. And that could be against me in a week that I think I'm going to win. And what are you going to do? Uh, every team is pretty strong. Even you guys who are said down near the bottom of the standings, which is, it happens every, it's the way it is every year, guys. You are all, you're all good. You all do well at the draft, and the league is challenging. <laughs> it takes a lot of luck uh, on top of other stuff. But, you know, to be successful in this league, and it's it's a challenge, which is what makes it so great, I think, and what um, what everybody loves about this league. So we'll see what happens coming up in the weeks ahead. Anything can happen. But let's see. Let's take a quick peek at week six and see um, if we got any problems here. How with the sh how week six is going to affect the standings here? Uh, we got the isotopes going against Bad Luck Bears. That should be a great matchup. Bad Luck Bears trying to bounce back. Um, they've been doing pretty well uh, this year so far. We'll see what they. So we'll see if they are able to knock off the isotopes and give them their first defeat this year. Uh, and then White Wolf still looking for his first win. Dub C trying to get back to 500. Should be a good matchup. Disco versus Mighty Midgets. That should be another powerhouse matchup. Uh, Disco trying to uh, catch up to first place there. Mighty Midgets falling back after last week. Looking for a bounce back this week. He said both these guys have been kind of uh, powerhouses so far this season, so that's going to be a great matchup. Two teams trying to, uh, so Mighty Midgets trying to bounce back, Disco trying to keep things rolling. Uh, both teams pretty loaded with players there, although <laughs> um, so Disco doesn't have Michael Thomas anymore, and um, Mighty Midgets are without Kamara this week, so we'll see how no having, not having any Saints influence on this matchup will affect the outcome there. Should be pretty interesting. Gags will try to continue against FC Bahoric. Hillbillies on PCP versus Shawshank. Both of those guys are 3-2, trying to um, get 
more on the plus side of 500 there. Um, somebody trying to get to 4 and 2, one of you will fall back to 500. At 3 and 3, should be a good matchup there. And then, uh, tough, <laughs> tough spot here because we've got Possum Magic and Space Antelope going up against each other. And like I said before, um, you're not out of it at 1 and 4. I'm living proof, but unfortunately, one of you guys is going to be 1 and 5 uh, after this week because you are playing each other. So someone is going to 1 and 5, and someone is going to bounce back to 2 and 4. So it should be an interesting uh, dogfight in that one, as both of you guys need that win. We'll see what happens. Should be pretty fun, and we'll let the podcasters... Um, actually, I guess there is going to be, there is no, um, <laughs> there is no podcast this week because Deadling is still away, so there won't be too, I think, hopefully we get something from Bean and Bigler there, but, all right, anything else? I'll be back here next week, hopefully the podcasters will be back then, and, all right, everyone, good luck this week, hopefully, uh, your team, teams perform above and beyond expectations for all of us. No big, hopefully no big injuries this week. And yeah, I think that's pretty it, pretty much it. So thanks for whoever is still tuned in and watched or listened. And we'll see you back here again next week. All right, thanks guys.